Hello, my name is Dr. Alex Lipchinski, and I'm a double board certified facial plastic surgeon and head neck surgeon. Today I'll be talking about the endoscopic mid face and forehead lift, and rejuvenation of the mid face, eye area, and periorbital area. In this slide, some of the aging characteristics in a middle aged person are demonstrated. Aging characteristics are primarily due to genetic factors and environmental factors such as sun exposure and smoking. In this patient, Aging characteristics up of the upper face include forehead lines or the horizontal lines, the frown lines or the number 11 lines between the brows, and brow ptosis, as well as lower facial drooping or jowling. This patient also had an excess upper lid skin, excess lower lid skin, as well as skin discoloration from sun exposure. The patient underwent an endoscopic mid face and forehead lift upper and lower lip lephroplasty, and a lower facial mini facelift. The picture on the right shows her postoperatively. Indications for this procedure include mid-face cheek drooping, also known as malar fat patosis, brow depression, and frowning. This slide shows the areas that are treated with the endoscopic mid-face and forehead lift area. The orange depicts the lateral and medial brow. The yellow depicts the infraorbital or SUF area. And the red depicts the midface or the malar fat pad area. Slide next to it shows yellow arrows which show the direction of pulling in the endoscopic midface and forehead lift procedure. Also should be noted that the glabellar or frown lines or number 11s can also be reduced with the endoscopic forehead lift procedure. In the slides that follow, you will see actual before and after pictures of patients that have undergone the endoscopic mid facelift procedure. Please place close attention to the periorbital or eye area. In this case, in the before and after, we can see that the lateral brow and eye area has been pulled laterally and superiorly, as well as the mid area has been lifted up, or the malar fat pad area. The yellow arrow show the direction of pull of the lateral brow, mid face, and periorbital area. This is another example of a patient before and after that had an endoscopic mid face and forehead lift. In this patient, we can clearly see that the lateral brow and mid face has been lifted up into a rejuvenatory position, as well as the glabellar lines or number 11s have been eliminated. Again, the yellow arrows depict the direction of pull of the lateral brow and midface, and the red circle indicates the rejuvenation or elimination of the glabellar frown lines. This is another case of a patient who had an endoscopic midface and forehead lift with rejuvenation of the periorbital and midface area, as well as the glabellar area. The next slide will show the, area, the direction of pull of the midface and periorbital area as well as treatment of the glabellar lines. In this case, the patient also had an endoscopic mid face lift procedure, treating the periorbital or eye area as well as the mid face and glabellar area or the number 11 or frown lines. Endoscopic mid face and forehead lifting is a rejuvenatory procedure that is not commonly talked about but you can see that it is very important in the rejuvenation of the upper face and the entire face as a whole. In many cases, rejuvenation of this area will be the difference between a patient looking pulled or not pulled. In many cases, the endoscopic mid face and forehead lift is more appropriate procedure than a standard facelift procedure. It can also be more important than an upper and lower lip blepharoplasty depending on the characteristics of the aging of the patient. In certain cases, only a mid-face and periorbital lift is required, such as in this case where the brows have already been set high by the patient by tattooing the brows in a high position. In this case, the forehead and lateral brow would not be lifted. In some cases, aging of the forehead and mid-face area 
precedes the aging of the lower face. In these cases, the endoscopic midface and forehead lift would be more appropriate than a lower facelift procedure. In this case, the patient had an endoscopic midface and forehead lift procedure, as well as an upper lid blepharoplasty and a lower lid blepharoplasty. In the next part of this video, I will show an actual intraoperative procedure of the endoscopic midface and forehead lift procedure. For those of you that are squeamish, you may want to skip this part. In this intraoperative video, we can see that a suture has been placed in the malar fat pad and brought out through a temporal incision, and by pulling it superior and laterally, the malar fat pad is lifted. This suture will be secured in place and the overlying skin redraped to fit the mid-face pull. There are two surgical approaches to the endoscopic midface and forehead lift, the hairline transtemporal approach and the infrared lid approach. The hairline approach is in the temporal area and the infrared lid approach is just below the eye. Both give good access to the infraorbital and malar area. However, I prefer the transtemporal approach due to a superior lifting effect of the lateral brow. Recovery time for the endoscopic midface forehead lift is approximately 7 to 10 days. There is very little bruising and some swelling in the periorbital area. Thank you for watching this educational video on the endoscopic midface and forehead lift. My name is Dr. Alex Lipchinski, and feel free to contact me at facechange.org or slooplift.com.